Rocky Mountain Construction, otherwise known as RMC, is one of the hottest manufacturers in the coaster industry. RMC has innovated time and time again ever since they built their first roller coaster. The invention of the iBox track may have been their most successful innovation so far as they have used this track on 16 different roller coasters, all built within the last 11 years. The vast majority of these rides were previously wooden roller coasters that were rough, boring, or unpopular and they are converted to hybrid coasters using RMC's steel iBox track. When we saw this track used on New Texas Giant, it shocked coaster enthusiasts, and we've all been on the edge of our seats to see what ride RMC is going to use this track on next. The most recent iBox conversion that we've had from RMC was Iron Gwazi as it was converted from a former wooden coaster called Gwazi. This coaster was intended to open back in 2020, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this ride did not open until this past spring. In the time period of the delay, we did not see any new RMC iBox conversions announced, but we did see a ground up hybrid coaster announced in Air Force One for Fun Spot Atlanta. We also saw the announcement of GCI's take on the hybrid track with their Titan track model, which is very similar to RMC's iBox track. Wildcat at Hershey Park has been announced to be closing, which is a ride highly expected to be converted into an RMC hybrid, but I still think this doesn't change much in terms of the direction that RMC is heading in. This has led me to believe that we are on the last leg of RMC iBox conversions for wooden coasters based on the lack of purchases we have seen in the past few years. However, on the bright side, this does make me think we are entering a new era for RMC, one where their creativity could be let loose and the sky is the limit. Literally, that probably is their only limit. Before we get into all of that, make sure you do me a huge favor by liking this video to help out the channel against the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy hearing about random roller coaster and theme park industry theories that I have. That said, let's talk about how RMC got to where they are today. A lot of you have a good understanding of how RMC leaped from just a casual construction company to one of the biggest players in the industry in just a matter of a few years. This could probably make a good video on its own, but in short, RMC started building coasters in the early 2010s, their two unique track models, those being the topper track and the iBox track. The former was made of wood and the latter was made of steel. RMC originally started out exclusively converting old wooden coasters with their iBox track to hybrid coasters and building ground up record breaking wooden roller coasters using their topper track. This is what RMC kept as their main focus for about 5 years or so until they introduced the Raptor model. The Raptor is a single rail coaster model that allows for more compact, fast paced, thrilling coasters that are pretty cheap. The first Raptors were introduced back in 2018 and two more have opened in addition to Wonder Woman going to Six Flags Magic Mountain this summer. Interestingly, RMC's last installation of the topper track on a ground up roller coaster was in 2016 on Lightning Rod, which ironically had most of its track replaced by iBox track in 2021. So I guess you could say Lightning Rod got RMC'd. We also saw Wildfire at Comartin open that same year, but it's been 6 years since we've seen a brand new topper track coaster. However, we have seen this track be installed on parts of Tremors at Silverwood. Since 2018, we have seen 3 hybrid conversions of wooden coasters and 2 ground up hybrid coasters built. RMC has also announced a new family hybrid coaster model which appears to be a downsized version of their more thrilling hybrid coasters. RMC no longer offers ground up topper track coasters on their website and instead offers their 3 steel tracked models and wooden coaster refurbishments. Their 208 retrack is a steel track that they can put on wooden coasters to help touch up up certain areas of the ride as well. One of the biggest turning points in the direction of RMC has been the construction of Zadra Energy Landia. This roller coaster is massive, standing at a height of 206 feet, featuring RMC's see-through lift hill, giving the coaster a monster presence in the park.
Park. This coaster was the first ever ground up hybrid the company had ever created. This ride surprisingly did not have a huge price tag either, only costing a little under $14.3 million USD. This ride puts something on the table for parks looking for a huge iBox coaster that didn't already have a huge wooden structure to use. The next coasters we'd see from RMC following Zadro would be Stunt Pilot and Jersey Devil Coaster, both of which would be ground up RMC Raptors. The most recent ride to open from RMC is Iron Gwazdi, which I mentioned was meant to open in 2020. Even though this coaster was a redo of Gwazi, it doesn't use a lot of the old structure from that coaster as this ride sort of carves its own path. This is made even more obvious by the fact that RMC nearly doubled the height of the original Gwazi to make the ride a hyper coaster. The two coasters RMC is currently working on are Airy Force 1, the company's latest ground up hybrid coaster, and Wonder Woman Flight of Courage, a near Jersey Devil clone that is opening this month. This means that the last hybrid conversion was announced in 2019 and should have been open in 2020. That would make nearly three years since we've seen any conversions. I will note that the pandemic threw the world off course during that time, so that may have played a part in no new hybrid conversions being announced. But I do think the pandemic was just an extra push for the industry that was already heading in that direction and not the driving force behind it. Even if Wildcat gets arm seated and opens in 2023, that's still three years with no conversions, while a handful of RMC's other models were sold. RMC has shifted their focus onto the Raptor model, which is becoming very popular and building up more of a market for ground up hybrids. RMC has already secured another sale of the Raptor model to Wallaby Holland as well. Not only do I think that RMC is trending away from their conversions, but I also think another manufacturer is pushing them away from that as well. GCI and Skyline Attractions have been working on their new Titan Track model, which is very similar to iBox Track. So far, a few parks have purchased some of this track to help smooth out certain rough sections of their wooden roller coasters. This model has seemed to have worked out well in helping to smooth out areas that have caused problems for years that manufacturers haven't had an answer to in the past. GCI also has been looking to do full conversions of wooden coasters to Titan Track, and they have said they are capable of doing full-fledged ground up coasters with inversions and even launches. Parks now have many options to fix up their wooden coasters without needing to fully convert them to hybrids. RMC is also established enough at this point where everyone knows who they are and what they offer, and there's probably not very many parks that are currently considering giving their wooden coasters a makeover, at least among the ones that have enough funding to do it. Parks seem more interested in trying to touch up their wooden coasters before making the plunge for a full conversion. Obviously, some things change, and plans don't always allow for immediate purchases, which is probably why Wildcat wasn't going to be refurbished until 2023 with the addition of Chocolate Town coming so recently. So, does this mean I think RMC will never convert a wooden coaster to a hybrid again? No, definitely not. When you look at a model that has been as successful as iBox conversions, a model like this does not just suddenly fall off the map for good unless they are specifically replaced or discontinued. Wildcat is probably going to get converted and I'm sure we'll see RMC eventually do another conversion when a coaster ages out and fits into a park's plans. But I do not think these conversions will be as frequent as they were in the past decade. Most wooden coasters that fit the criteria for this treatment have already gotten it or the park just seems to be more interested in preserving the coaster in its current state. Or they just don't care at all. <coughs> Leron. <coughs> Companies have come up with solid alternatives to refurbishing wooden coasters like the Titan Track Complete Rebuilds or even RMC's own 208 Retrack. Parks are willing to try a couple things before they go for a full on conversion, which is probably more costly than the alternatives. However, it is impossible to say that Iron Gwazi will be the last hybrid conversion because circumstances are always changing. Maybe a wooden coaster somewhere gets beat down enough or needs new trains and the park just says the heck with it, let's make this into something new. I'm sure that we will eventually see another hybrid conversion from RMC in the future, but I don't think this will be the company's main focus anymore. Although hybrid conversions may become more of a rarity in the future, it is likely that this could lead to a huge silver lining for us as coaster enthusiasts. As we've seen with Zadra and now Air Force 1, RMC can create amazing layouts when they're allowed to let their minds run free. Not only can they create these awesome layouts, but they can do them at reasonable costs. Think about it, RMC can get you a hyper coaster with an amazing layout straight up from the ground for around $15 million USD, which is something that most companies can't do. 
They also can get you a cheap, compact single rail coaster for $5 million USD too. Even if that model has had its fair share of problems. RMC teased the possibility of building a Giga soon, and that honestly wouldn't surprise me at this point. I think RMC is probably the most likely manufacturer to get a job building a Giga in America at least, maybe with the exception of B&M working with Cedar Fair again, or a wild card like one of the Busch Gardens parks. They likely offer the cheapest and potentially the best option of anyone on the market. And there isn't really any reason to suggest that RMC couldn't build a Giga Hybrid. RMC has also stretched their appeal to family-oriented parks with their family hybrid coasters as well, which might be able to make them one of the best manufacturers for family coasters as well. I haven't mentioned RMC's T-Rex model yet either, which looks to have capabilities to reach heights of over 500 feet once RMC gets a chance to perfect their technology. Even though I think the peak of Webox conversions is probably behind us, RMC is still probably one of the hottest manufacturers out there, and still remains the gold standard of innovation in the industry. RMC will likely continue to impress for years to come, as we eagerly await their next creations. The company has been all gas and no brakes the past 11 years, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So are we in the final chapter of the iBox conversions? Maybe, but I don't think that will hinder RMC's progress one bit. Do you agree with me in thinking that Iron Gwazi or hypothetically RMC Wildcat will be one of the last, if not the last, iBox conversion? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, make sure to tell me what you think is next for the company and if you can see them building a Giga in the not so distant future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like to help us out against the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more videos discussing the future of just about everything in the industry coming soon. If you'd like to help me out even more, then go subscribe to our second channel. WNY and Beyond where I post no copyright off ride footage. If you'd like to chat with other fans of the channel, make sure to join my Discord server linked in the description below. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.